når vi taler om Engaging Food Architecture, så taler vi samtidig også om nogle særlige indsatser, som vi tror på, at vi kan være med til at hjælpe verden med som arkitekter. Fordi verden står over for nogle store spørgsmål som, hvordan bosætter vi byerne fremover? Hvordan transformerer vi vores byer og vores bygninger fremover? Og hvordan arbejder vi med bæredygtighed? De tre spørgsmål hænger fuldstændig uløseligt sammen. Og hvis vi vil engagere os i dem, så skal det være ægte engagement. Og det vil sige, at vi bliver nødt til at gå ind i verden og tilbyde det, vi kan, samtidig med, at vi skal åbne ørerne for de ønsker, verden har, og der, hvor verden er på vej hen. Og ikke bare tro, at vi kan blive ved med at være der, hvor vi hele tiden har været igennem de sidste 50 år. So our workshop is about haunting Aarhus and the idea of haunting is looking at inhabitation and occupation somehow from the outside and the project addresses both the city and the particularities of um, the opportunity for students here in Aarhus that are set up by the really excellent workshop facilities but not just the tools and so on but the way that workshops being set up so that students have access to these tools and can in the in the Danish tradition learn to design with an understanding of craft and material. Okay, so um, engaging architecture. I mean, for me, um, architecture always engages the exterior. Um, what I see here and with this workshop as well as the facilities uh, of the school and the school setup is that um, there's an incredible opportunity to, to um, engage the city, the people, the community through material means. Um, the, the shop facilities are incredible. I think the, the people that you bring in here, as well as it seems to be the structure and culture of the place, is always thinking outside. Um, the project within the uh, workshop is specific about public space and engaging community. Um, but I think the tactics we've taken in it in terms of using the facilities and the shop and discussing ideas as well as issues around uh, uh, commerce and, and, and public space and uh, the general culture of Aarhus uh, has been reaching out um, from the very beginning and it's been magical to see the students do this through making things and that fabricative knowledge of that sort has that ability uh, and architecture is a very special discipline to do that with. Uh, I'm here as a visiting professor to the school uh, and for this moment, this trip, I'm actually working with first year students. I'm trying to engage them in a discourse of uh, sustainability and global climate change through literature and narrative. And I thought that would be a much uh, more interesting way of en uh, engaging with the world's big, th these big issues of the world uh, through narratives. And it would be much more enticing for them rather than starting from a scientific point of view. Um, I think, you know, all architectural students and architects should have a position on what they think sustainability should be. It could be either from, you know, to do with uh, water procurement, energy, to food sustainability. Uh, food sustainability is uh, an area what I, I'm most interested in, uh, something that I think students could easily get engaged in because we all have to eat for, for that matter. Um, I think also um, the teaching of sustainability is something that 
architectural schools should be engaging in through uh, not just first year but all the way through. I think we have an obligation to really address it but not necessarily um, provide a solution but to speculate about how architecture could engage, could contribute to the wider context of uh, sustainability and how we can actually maybe uh, work with climate change rather than combat it. Okay, so um, I have been invited to run a workshop for first years. They're starting out, they're really new, and uh, they don't really know about how to look at things and how to interpret things, and they potentially feel that the work of uh, an architect and a student at an architecture school is very closed. Uh, we're trying to make them engage with the outside and to look in the city and to potentially uh, design mechanisms to aid the way that they look so kind of like a very specific uh, instrument for that kind of activity. And, it, and lots of what they're designing or thinking about involves them working as a group and potentially involves them working with people who they come across in the city. Uh, one group are doing a quite an interesting thing where they're trying to make people produce an activity at a crossroads that might not bear fruit for 200 years to, to plant a seed and make it grow and act as a, com a very, very, very long-winded community activity rather than a pop-up, a kind of anti-pop-up. Um, and that will be interesting because they're going to make it and they're going to go out there and some people are going to watch them. And hopefully, you know, they'll start asking questions and what we're trying to do will get spread around and they'll tell tales about it to one another. So, um, yeah, that, the idea that the city isn't kind of like a frozen event that exists in the time that you're here uh, and it has a history that influences how you perform now, and you might be performing the new version that has influence on the future, is the kind of thing that I'm trying to do with them. We'll see if it happens. As an institution, we have a responsibility to deliver uh, candidates who can operate as obviously as architects out in the field. But we're also an academic institution, and we also have a responsibility to be part of that discourse and discussion of how architecture can and potentially will develop in our future. And that's where research, combined with teaching, I think, plays a really important role to be able to uh, have that discussion and that discourse.